uh, 3D vision glasses and view it that way. I also highly recommend getting one of these 3D television sets like the Vera that I mentioned as well, and that would give you both a great editing experience as well as a sort of consumer look that you might want to make sure that works. And that's pretty much uh, the settings that you need to know. There are a couple of other things to point out uh, just to let you know. We've got the ability to mix these, which is important because you might have NVIDIA on one and you might have your Panasonic Vera display as your second head display. So that's great that it allows us to have different types of glasses on it. And really, once you get all your settings done correctly, either in Premiere or in First Light, you can pretty much just edit off the left eye. And the other settings that you have involve using uh, SDI cards. So you can use HD SDI cards like the AJA cards that are out there, and those will put out two distinct streams of SDI, either on uh, the right eye for one SDI channel and the left eye for the other SDI channel, and those can be fed into a real 3D projector or Panasonic makes some displays which have dual SDI ports on them as well for 3D. So really, really flexible workflows in this higher end resolution that are required. Just to point that out, you can take it from consumer all the way to theater. From here, we're ready to go jump into Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and take a look. And what you'll notice is you've got a Cineform folder here that you use for editing in 3D. And again, you go down to the 3D folder and you pick the setting that matches your camera. I've got a couple different settings, so I'll make a couple different uh, sequences and show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and just click 1080p uh, 23976. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, import a bunch of 3D files into Premiere Pro. So I'm going to navigate down to my media browser and I'll go ahead and grab a bunch of files in my Panasonic folder. And I'll just import all these files into my project. All right, let's jump in to go look at some of the sequence viewing options that we have. So I'm going to click on the sequence down here. This yellow outline appears uh, on the sequence panel here. And I'm going to go up to sequence settings, playback settings. And you'll notice here it says that I'm in a Cineform RT mode. And I'm going to make sure this is set to uh, standard uh, 2D OpenGL for this first mode I'll show you. And I'll do the same thing for my external display. And my external display in this particular case will be my consumer 3D television set connected to the second uh, port on my NVIDIA card. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. What I have is I have this image here edge to edge on my Panasonic uh, Vera display. And all I have to do to see that in 3D is I'm going to click down here and I'm going to go to my Cineform setting uh, display type. And I'm going to put that in a side by side mode. Now when I come over here, you'll see this in a side-by-side -side mode. My 3D television, the Panasonic Vera, has already picked up that that's a side-by-side -side signal, and it's gone ahead and put that in 3D. So I can put on my active 3D Panasonic glasses, and it's working great. And again, that'll work pretty much on any of the consumer televisions that use these active glasses. Again, you're just having that consumer 3D television set uh, connected with a DVI to HDMI cable off of your NVIDIA card. Those TVs will come with glasses or have an option to buy glasses, and you're all set. And it works great. And I've tested it on the Mac uh, in the version I'll show you in a second, and on the PC, and it works great. Again, one of the keys is, is you can't sit real close to that monitor. Those monitors are meant to be viewed from about uh, four feet on back. So it's important that when you're editing that way that you take a step back when you're viewing that. Now, a couple other things that you can do when you're monitoring. Go ahead and put this back to left eye or right eye anytime you want. I should also take the time to show you you can put this in an anaglyph mode um, as well. So you can see I'm in a, a red-blue mode here, and I'm seeing red-blue on my full screen as well, where I can put my glasses on. Again, very handy when you're on a laptop or something like that, and you just want to be able to check the 3D. Not um, the greatest way to look at it, but again, it, it'll give you a point of reference. And as I pointed out before, using amber, blue, or green magenta is going to tend to retain those colors a little bit better. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this back, as I did before, into... Uh, 
left eye mode. And let's go back up to sequence settings and look at a couple of the other options. Uh, so I go back to playback settings and I'm going to leave my internal windows set to standard uh, 2D. And again, if you happen to have that Hyundai display that I mentioned before, you can go into full screen 3D interlace. You really only want this on the second display. You can, in fact, look at it here if you want to, but uh, you don't really want to look at your editing window as an interlace signal because it gives you a headache pretty quick. But anyway, uh, looking at uh, full 3D horizontal on a monitor like that Hyundai passive monitor will let you use passive glasses like the ones you have at, uh, at Avatar. There's a whole industry starting on 3D glasses right now and Microvision Optical's got these uh, really nice Neo X lens uh, glasses that are out there. I've actually used these in the movie theater as well and they're fantastic and quite stylish. So lots of options coming out and those are passive glasses. At this point you could just click OK and your monitor will go into a horizontal uh, mode. And let me see if I can um, mimic that on the internal monitor to show you what I'm seeing on my external. So you'll, you'll see this interlaced uh, display over here. And what it'll do if you're actually uh, looking at this on, say, a Hyundai monitor is it would make your entire interface um, look like this. And again, not really that ideal. Uh, for making that work. So not something I uh, I recommend for your internal monitor, only your second monitor. But again, nice to have the option. So I'll click those back. Again, to get the best possible editing experience, I recommend using the NVIDIA 3D Vision glasses. So I'm going to click on Sequence and go back into my Sequence Settings, Playback Settings, and then I can set my internal window if I'm using the NVIDIA glasses as my primary monitor. Again, works great. Um, if I happen to have two monitors like that Alienware display I mentioned, and there's a few other ones out there. Um, the Alienware just happens to be the best picture that I've seen so far. Uh, you could actually set both of these uh, to that if you wanted to. Or again, you could have one set one way and one set the other way. Another NVIDIA feature that's supported is their dual SDI option. So you can buy an SDI option for some of their cards, which will allow you to enable both of the SDI ports, because there's two of them on there, one left eye and one right eye, and then go ahead and feed that into to projector type setup for a theater or you could go ahead and set that up into a preview monitor like uh, some of the ones that Panasonic has which have dual SDI 3D support. So it's nice that we have NVIDIA dual SDI built right into the plugin for Premiere Pro. So it's a really nice job uh, from Cineform supporting that. So at this point, those are pretty much your options for, uh, for viewing your playback. Again, really, really flexible. For demo's sake, I'm going to go ahead and just put this uh, in an onion skin mode so it sort of looks like I'm in 3D. So we can go ahead and see stereoscopic separation here. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other options that we have while we're editing. Let's go ahead and take a title and bring a title in. And again, this could be a graphic or anything else might need to, uh, to use. And I'll just go ahead and type out that title. And let's drag this directly on my sequence here. Now, how do I get this title in 3D? Well, if you go over here and you click on your effects, you'll notice that there's a plugin selector over here, which will show you accelerated effects from Adobe, 32-bit color base, YUV, and now Cineform. So if I click on Cineform, I'll notice I've got a number of different effects that are stereoscopic effects. The one I'm going to use now is Parallax 3D. I drag and drop this. Let's go over to my effects controls and I'll flip open Parallax and I'll go ahead and just set these. And as you notice, when I do that, I'm now presented with my Annapolis in 3D title in 3D. Again, here you want to be careful to adjust this to where it makes the most amount of sense for your viewer. I find anywhere from 10 to 
15, pretty acceptable with a pretty good look. Probably go as high as 20 and it sort of jumps out at you, but any more than that, it really sort of starts getting um, a little crazy. But it's nice that you've got these controls. Now, what happens when I start using different types of effects? If I happen to bring a piece of video, let's drag a piece of video on top of this video, for example, and do a picture in picture, for example. And let's just go ahead and scale this uh, 